Greetings, Rainmakers. Uh, it's good to see all y'all again. Uh, I noticed a couple of repeat people in here. Connie, it's good to see you. Uh, we'll uh, jump into the material in just a minute. Um, for those of you who are new, may not have listened to one of these before, um, I'm David Brandon, copywriter for Rainmaker Digital. I'm here with Katie Barrio, uh, Vice President of Rainmaker Digital Services. Hey, everybody. It's great to be here. We're here today to talk about WooCommerce stores. Now, before I really get into the meat of it, I do want to say up front, uh, if you have questions throughout, let us know. You can type them over in that box. Um, if And also, we're trying a few different things with this webinar. Um, We've had, we had a couple technical difficulties last time. We're trying a lot of different stuff right now. So let us know um, if it's working, if it's not working, if there's anything that you want to see uh, or anything on your end, especially with audio. We've had some issues with popping and crackling. We've tried to take care of those. If you do hear any issues, let us know because we're still trying to make sure that this is the best possible experience for all of y'all, whether you're here in person or just listening to the recording. So, WooCommerce stores. This one's a fun one. I've actually been thinking about e-commerce a fair bit. I had a product idea not too long ago, so I've been digging into it on my own uh, on the Rainmaker platform. And uh, you can sell through it in a lot of different ways. Rainmaker platform has a lot of different ways to sell product, and WooCommerce is only one of them. Uh, some of you have probably sold courses through LearnDash or MemberPress, Maria. Uh, I don't know if you're in here or not yet, but I can't see because I'm sharing my screen. Uh, but I know you've sold some courses, uh, and there's some other people in here who have as well. Um, it's perfectly viable to sell through LearnDash or MemberPress by itself. You can set up stores in other ways. But WooCommerce has a lot of depth to it. It makes it really easy to buy multiple items with shopping cart functionality instead of just one item at a time. We talked about some of the basics in the last state of the platform. I'll go ahead and link that when I send out the email for the recap. I mentioned a few things about kind of organizing your products, product taxonomy in, in that piece, uh, but we're really digging into it today. See, what makes WooCommerce really interesting is that you can set up a store with all these different things to sort and tag by. Think of it like you're merchandising a physical store. I'll show you here. Uh, this is a quick store I whipped up last night um, with a few sample products. And this took hey, me... David? Yes. We're not seeing your screen. Oh, you're not seeing my screen? Nope. Uh, that's a problem. Let me go ahead and... Uh, <laughs> there we go. Okay, so here, let me show you this beautiful slide that I made um, that you haven't been looking at for the last three minutes. There we go. Um, so here, thank you, Katie, appreciate that. <laughs> this is a quick store I whipped up last night with a few sample products. I haven't optimized it or anything. Uh, it's literally just like, I, I made one change in the theme, everything else is just out of the box, what WooCommerce made for me automatically. Uh, you can see here, I've got all my categories set up. I can click through. Um, you can see there's a few different like, items and stuff that I made. Um, you can click through here. There's like subcategories under this one um, where you can see there would be other subcategories here if I'd made more. But like all of this literally took me, I mean, it's maybe taken me an hour all told to build all of this. And, you know, if I'd spent a little more time on it and actually was like building it for real in about a day, I could have a pretty good, good looking functional store. So you can adjust a lot of things, but it's really easy to get off the ground. And if you invest just a little time, your shopping experience can be significantly better than just what I've done here. Yeah, that, that looks really good, David. Um, just about everyone has shopped on Amazon. And if you've ever narrowed the range of products with the check boxes or the drop down menus when you're on, on Amazon, or, or one of the other retailers and you're looking for different things, you know how useful tags and categories can be and WooCommerce makes it very easy. So today we're gonna take you through product categories, attributes and tags, what they are, how they work and what they can do for your WooCommerce store. So first let's take a quick look at what they actually are. 
categories are the types of products you offer. It's a way to group products with similar features. They are hierarchical, so you can, you can nest them together into subcategories. And then next we have attributes, which are variations for a product. Uh, think of things like colors and sizes, things like that. And then tags are important features of a particular product that aren't easy to classify into categories. It's another way to group products based on topics or keywords. Yeah, so um, actually, let me go back on that. I'm gonna switch over screens. Yeah, so it's a little tough to explain the difference between all three without having an example. I mean, a lot of you have worked with WordPress for a while. You kind of know what categories and tags are. Um, you know, if you haven't, we'll go through it. But, you know, most of y'all are at least aware of that concept. Uh, the attributes thing can get a little bit interesting, uh, but we're going to go through all three. Uh, I've got a pretty good example worked up for this one. Uh, in this in this store, we're a company that sells products for science fiction fandoms. It's a market segment I know well. You can't see me, but I've actually got a Mandalorian t-shirt on under my collared shirt right now because um, I'm, a, I'm a big Star Wars fan. Uh, you know, so this is a segment I know well. Our categories are the types of products that we offer. Uh, we're going to take a look at that. Hey, David. Uh, yeah. Right before we jump into that, let's make sure they know how to turn on WooCommerce. Yes, great point. Um, so for your WooCommerce settings, um, we've gone through this pretty much every every webinar we've done uh, where you go to find your, your features. So you can just go to the features here, right? Yes, in the universal settings, go to features, the first tab of modules, and you'll see WooCommerce right there. Make sure that box is checked and save your page and you're good to go. Cool. Yep, and obviously mine's turned on, but if you don't have it on, that's where you go. Uh, since it's turned on, uh, what I can do now is I can go to the conversion menu on the left side here and click on this bullseye icon. And under this, I'm gonna scroll down to the WooCommerce section and I'm gonna click product categories. So categories is the first thing that we're looking at. And then on this first screen, that's where you'll see all the categories that have been created so far listed and you can add new categories. So for our example of the sci-fi store that David had put together, we might have clothing, desk accessories, print, sculptures, and you can see we've, he's already got a, a number of them built already. Yep. So I'm just going to show, like, I haven't built a desk accessories category. So if I was going to do that right now, I can do desk accessories. Um, you know, any items that I say belong in that category will show up on the page for desk accessories. So if I added a, a coffee mug as a product, uh, I can put the product in that category when I load it on my site, and it'll show up on that category page. You know what? I'm just going to do that. This is this is pretty this is pretty quick. So I just put the name slug. You know, um, I'll run through this in a second. Um, but yep, yeah, and I can literally just make that category boom right now. So I'll show you here on the slide really quick what I have done. So you can see my my mouse pointer here. Name is the title of the page. So that's going to be your category page, the name that you see. So if I click here on clothes, uh, take just a second, you know, see name there. And the slug is the URL version of the name. So my clothes category, uh, you can see I've already built. Uh, I'll, how do I go back to that page? Give me a second. Uh, clothes archive. There we go. So you can see the name is the name of the page, so it would be clothes. The slug um, is whatever uh, shows up in the URL, which would be clothes in this case. Uh, you can add a detailed description if you want to. Depending on your theme, it may show up or it may not. In this case, my theme actually does show uh, the, the description content. Uh, it's probably a good idea to have some of that content, even if you don't 
have a theme that shows it, just in case you want to change it down the line. It's a lot easier to do it on the front end than it is to try and go through each category after the fact. Um, going back to this slide, you'll notice um, I'm skipping parent category and um, display type. That's for a reason. Um, I'll come back to that in a second. The other thing that we can look at here is um, thumbnail. So you can upload or add an image. You, you saw me do that earlier. You can just pull it from the media picker or upload a file. Really, really simple. You've done it if you've worked with Raymaker Platform or WordPress or Joomla or any other you know, platform ever, you've probably used this sort of thing. Um, so going back to the categories, the cool thing about this is that they can nest. So see, I made the clothes category as a, an example on my site, but if you, but on the screen, you can see like there's a subcategory for hats and for sweaters and for t-shirts. And then if I go into sweaters, you can see I've built a subcategory for hoodies, you know, and I could have like, I don't know, fishermen's sweaters or like, um, I don't even know what you call all of those different <laughs> turtleneck, whatever, you know, and and those categories can nest in each other. And you can see here on my category page, I've got clothes and you can see the hyphen before that, that shows that's a subcategory. And then hoodie shows that it's a subcategory of a subcategory. Uh, so that, that seemed pretty clear. Um, you know, so after subcategories, we're gonna take a look at um, how you do that. So if I was gonna add a new category, let's say I'm gonna add it to desk accessories. I'm just gonna call it coffee mugs. Coffee mugs and make sure that's URL friendly. Your instructions on that are there. What I do here is I choose a parent category. Um, and it's not showing desk accessories because I... Uh, just a second. Uh, but yeah, you can... You can take a look at the, there we go. Coffee mugs, coffee mugs. And my parent category would be desk accessories. See? So now I can create that and I'd say, you drink your coffee from this. And I'm gonna use the same picture because I'm lazy. Boom. And for my display type, that's the other box that we need to look at here. I can choose default, or I can choose products, subcategories, or both. So you kind of want to choose products, subcategories, or both with this. Um, if it's a big high level category, say clothes, I have that set to just subcategories. Because I don't want to see my whole, uh, you know, literally every piece of apparel on my site. I want to have it broken down into subcategories. But if I go down the line a little bit, sweaters, I might want to have both my products and my subcategories because there's a few less products there. Maybe somebody will see something that catches their eye. In this case, with coffee mugs, I'm like, eh, I just want to see products. I'm not going to put any subcategories under that. So I'm just going to add it as a new category. Boom. There it is. And you do have a great deal of control over how each one of these category pages or subcategory pages displays. If you want to really get in depth and customize the page and add more content to it, you can click through to the category and edit and add more content. Uh, we're not going to get into that right now for the sake of time, but if you do want to walk through of how to customize those pages, then just let us know and we can help you out. Yeah, for sure. And one thing I just uh, wanted to mention right now, because I just remembered this, um, if you want to reorder the way that your categories are displayed, you can actually do that here. So if I want to, you can grab that little three line handle on the right there. I want sweaters first and hats and hats second. I can just drag it up. Boom. And as soon as this loads, I can reload my page and it'll show Um, that my categories are in a slightly different order. There we go. See? Sweaters, hats, t-shirts. Easy. So those are our categories. That's how, that's how our categories work. 
Uh, what about our attributes? Um, so let's go back to our clothing example. Um, my Mandalorian t-shirt. Uh, you know, the popular Star Wars show, it's on Disney+. Plus. Um, if I was to sell that shirt on my site, it'd be under clothes, and then it'd be under the t-shirt subcategory. Pretty clear. Attributes come in when we start talking about things that aren't categories. So I'm a pretty big guy. I'm about six foot two, 230 pounds. Um, I have to buy tall t-shirts because I have a really long torso, and I have to buy large t-shirts. My brother, on the other hand, is about five foot seven, five foot eight. Um, and he has to, we obviously do not buy the same size t-shirts. You can kind of see where I'm going with this. Um, an attribute is a variation on a product, like my extra tall large shirt versus my brother's medium, or black versus red versus white. These are not things that you want cluttering up your categories. Instead, you'd associate them with an item so people can choose from the product screen. Uh, so, Katie, where would we find our attributes on the back end? Well, it's with all the other conversion things in the left-hand menu under the bullseye icon, and we have a section there for WooCommerce, and you'll see product attributes. Cool. So there we go. So there you can set the top-level attributes that you want your products to have. Um, there are some very obvious ones for clothing, like, like David talked about, size, color. Or you may have different pack sizes for a product. Uh, jewelry may come in gold or silver. It just depends on the variations that your products come in. So if we were to add one here, say for color, then that's literally what we would call it. We'd type in color for the name of it. And we put color in the lowercase uh, slug box. And as David mentioned, if it were two words for the for the name of it, we'd put a hyphen in for the slug, so it would uh, be a valid URL. Um, it ha we have an option to enable archives now for this attribute. Now, you wouldn't necessarily need to do that, but there may be a case where it's handy. Um, I think we're going to leave that off for now. Um, and then you can also choose what order you want these to come in. So. Yep. David, if you want to get that added and show yeah, yeah. how those terms. So uh, here, I've got the attributes pages up here. So you can see I already built the color. And you can see I have over here terms, red, black, white. So just having the color attribute um, is not enough. You know, you make the attribute, um, it, you, you need terms in it to define what that attribute is. So all I have to do after I create that attribute is click Configure Terms. So I click here. Uh, I'm going to do this with color because um, I've already built out a bunch of sizes. So I have red, black, white. Let's say I have blue. I want to do blue. I'm just going to do blue for the slug and blue for the description because it's a demo. There we go. And I can add a new color right there. You'll notice, again, same thing as with the categories. There's three little lines to the right of each attribute. And I can, if I want, you know, say, I probably want my black and white first, my kind of neutral colors. Uh, so I can literally just pull those up. And boom, black and white will come up first, and then blue, and then red. And I can choose when I put these attributes on products which ones I want. You know, say I have a shirt and I only have small and medium. I only put small and medium as attributes. Um, you know, this just gives me all the options that are available under that attribute. Um, yeah, and this custom ordering is really handy, especially for attributes that don't have an alphabetical or a numerical order that makes sense. Right, and also, just like with categories, you can create attributes in the screen when you create a product, or if you create them here in the product attribute screen, you'll need to go edit your product to retroactively associate the attributes with the product. So people will be able to select their size or color in our example um, and a as they're adding the product to their cart. So that is categories and attributes. Uh, they both have a fairly logical order. What about tags, David? So again, let's use my Mandalorian t-shirt as an example. 
Uh, if you, so Katie, if you were to describe that shirt, even without seeing, I mean, you haven't seen it, uh, what would it be? Like what, what, uh, outside of size, outside of, um, color, outside of, uh, you know, the fact that it's a t-shirt, how would you describe it? Well, you said it's a Star Wars shirt, so I would say it's a shirt with an image related to Star Wars TV show called The Mandalorian. Right, exactly. So those things would be my tags. I would tag Star Wars, I would tag TV shows, and I'd tag The Mandalorian. Because if I'm somebody who's trying to buy a t-shirt like mine, those are things that I'd want to be able to sort by. Um, those are things where I'd want to browse as a category. And tags are dead simple. I mean, like, we've done, we've done this already with the other two categories. It's exactly the same you can see here on the screen. Name slug description boom and these you don't have to worry about ordering anything because obviously like unlike the other you know unlike attributes and unlike categories these are not hierarchical these are not something where you need a specific order it's just a it's just a tag it's just an attribute that i can't say attribute because that's something <laughs> something else but it, it's it's a quality of the item that you know doesn't necessarily nest in a category um, so we've talked about adding these things to products. Um, oh, not yet. Um, we talked about adding these things to products. Uh, I'm just going to run you through quick. We do have time uh, to demo this. So I'm just going to show you if I was going to create a product, how I'd do that, um, how I'd add my attributes, tags, categories, that sort of thing. So I'm going to say, uh, let's... Let's stick with the Star Wars theme. I'm going to make a Darth Vader t-shirt, and uh, it's going to be... Okay, so I'm going to add new on product. You see, it's under the bullseye menu, same area where we've been. Add new product. And I'm just going to say... Darth Vader... T-shirt. Oh, this is timely, if any of you have been... Uh... Well, I won't say that. Spoiler alert. <laughs> uh, let's see clothes and t-shirts you see over here I can scroll down on the right there's this product categories box and I'm going to make t-shirts my primary category for that um, and it's under clothes as well um, you know I can add you know I can add all the description stuff and the and the meta description and all we we went through that in the state of the platform where all that will show up again I'm going to link that in the recap uh, so I'm going to say, oh, I don't know, this is a $20 t-shirt, um, but they haven't been moving, so I'm going to put it at $15, because uh, I want to get this out. Um, it's not virtual, it's not downloadable, it's a very simple product. And then from here, I'm going to click Attributes. And I said already, we only have black for this. Uh, no, actually, let's let's say we have black and white, because I want to show we have multiple colors. So black and white. You can see here I clicked in that box and I started typing and it populated it for me. So I could just click on it and add it in. And then if I want to remove it, I can just click that little X. And I can even add a new color from here. So say I got in a green one. And then that'll add it. You'll see it back on the attributes screen where we were before. Um, it's adding it as an entirely new attribute for the whole site. Um, and I have it checked to be visible on the product page so you can choose which one is which. So I can go ahead and just save the attributes there. And this one you do actually have to save manually. Finally, for uh, tags here, what did we say? We said Star Wars, and then I'll put a comma, uh, and... I'll put movies, I'll put TV shows, I'll, uh, yeah, I'm, yeah, Darth Vader, Darth Vader, that's a good one. You'd want that. And just add those. And this will, again, populate those on the back end. If I don't have those tags made yet, you can see here, um, I'll just, I'll just show you, um, As soon as it loads, there we go. Oh, it hasn't, because I, I haven't made the item yet. That's why. 
uh, let me go ahead and oh, I'm not going to add an image. Let me just go ahead and publish that item. And then I should see those other tags right here. Do, do, do. Yep, see, there's Darth Vader. Showed up. All right, so yeah, I mean, if you were gonna make a product, it's that it's that easy. There's other, there's other parts that you'd wanna add in. Again, State of the Platform has that. Um, but really, it doesn't take much to get your categories, attributes, and tags right. There you have it. That's how you organize your products through WooCommerce. You can build a store like this. You know, you saw how fast that was for me. You know, adding tags, attributes, adding products, it's really easy. You know, you can get in depth with it, but, um, you know, organizing your products through WooCommerce is simpler than you might think. And as we mentioned earlier, there's a lot of different ways to sell through Rainmaker Platform. Uh, you can try this one. You could try other ones if you want to. Reach out to us if you want a hand. We can't get into everything in one short uh, little half hour webinar or half hour plus maybe. Um, so yeah, contact us and we can walk you through stuff if you want to see anything more. Do we have any questions? Um, I know um, a couple of you sent in questions already, so we can get to those. Uh, we got one from Jared. Uh, Katie, you want to take uh, it's how to set up affiliate listings like Amazon or StubHub? Yeah, um, WooCommerce makes it easy to set up a product that's an affiliate link. When you are creating a product, you will see in the drop-down box uh, for the type of product, there's one called external affiliate link, and looks like David is heading there right now. Yeah. Just select the option for the affiliate link, and then it'll give you the fields that you need to put in the link to your affiliate product and price, et cetera. So it's really easy. Yep. So I just scrolled down the screen here to enter my product data. Instead of simple product, I said external affiliate. See, that's your, that's your box where you choose it. Got your URL, text, price, everything. Cool. Uh, from Fred, how do you set up, how to set up to sell eBooks and PDF type products? And that's in the same area. So for digital products, you select a simple product. And then you would check the virtual box, which will disable the shipping features, and then the downloadable box to automatically provide a link to the file to download. So just make sure both of those are checked, and then you've got the extra field. Uh, you put a, for the download file, you put a, a link, or you add the file, you see the box there to add it. And then when they receive their email receipt, there'll actually be a link to download the file in their receipt. Um, and then it's also added on their um, account page as well. So it makes it very, very handy, very easy to do. Cool. Um, Maria, uh, she sent one. She said, what's the difference between WooCommerce and MemberPress? Do they overlap? Katie, you want to take that one? Yeah, um, both MemberPress and WooCommerce can handle financial transactions. Uh, MemberPress has a single page checkout for a single membership, whereas WooCommerce has a traditional shopping cart where people can add multiple products to their cart for a single transaction. Uh, MemberPress checkout does not capture a physical address, so it's easier to use Woo when you're selling some type of a, a physical product with inventory. Um, they will integrate together. So Wu would handle the financial transaction and the member press would manage the content access. I mean, and if you use LearnDash also, then it integrates in with the, both of those as well. So um, they're all there to work independently or together. And I'll mention too, we've, we did this in one of our early webinars. We touched on that. Um, if any of you want to see that recording, um, shoot an email through. Uh, and I'll make sure you get your hands on that because um, we, we have like touched on it. We haven't gone in depth on it. And again, if you want more like walkthrough type content, um, you know, feel free to contact us and we can walk you through. Uh, let's see. Got one here from Connie. Uh, she asks, is there a fee? Uh, I can answer that one. Uh, no. For Rainmaker Platform, 
all of this is built in. It all comes, uh, I mean, well, it's not free because you're paying for the platform, but it's bundled in with the platform. Um, you know, you don't have to pay anything extra to use WooCommerce. Um, there, you will pay on the payment gateway side. So, I mean, but if you're already using, if you're already selling through some other aspect of Rainmaker platform, it's just the same payment gateway that you're already using. Um, so whatever fees you're paying to, you know, Stripe or, you know, PayPal or whoever, you would still be paying that. But as far as using WooCommerce itself, nah, nothing. Uh, let's see, Katie, we got anything? Anybody drop one in? I don't see anything in the Q&A box. If anyone has anything, if you want to drop that in there before we close out, feel free to do that. But it looks like I don't see anything. Any other questions? Cool. Well, uh, hopefully that answers, you know, anything that that might you might have been interested in. Uh, again, reach out to us if you have any other questions or if you want to see any of the supplemental content. Uh, we're happy to send that on to you. Uh, so thanks for tuning in. It's been great to be with you today. Um, we'll catch you at the next webinar. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, David.